Uh, my full name is Widiat Moko, and I came from Jakarta, Indonesia. I work at the Department of Urology, Cipto Mangun Kusumo Hospital, and I work as the staff of the Division of the Andrology and Stone Surgery at there. I uh, received the patient that uh, have the erectile dysfunction and mm. it, it doesn't respond with medical treatment. Mm. And then it not endocarpal injection, it, it doesn't really respond with it. So I think uh, I have to find another way, mm. another alternative therapy to treat these patients. Mm. And then uh, I read about the penile implanter in Asia and I found you. And I think you are the one of the big implanter in Asia. Mm patient from my mm. patients mm. that have the erectile dysfunction. Mm. I think it uh, they must have the mm. like this operation. Because uh, no money, no gain, I think. That uh, I want to um, struggle. Uh, if there is no another party that uh, will support me, I think uh, I will uh, pay for myself. Mm. Because I think this is the most important uh, section of the urology in Indonesia. I have to do this. Mm, I searched from the Google, the penile implant in Asia, and then I found you. And then I searched the PubMed, and mm -hmm. then I, I already contacted the, some people mm -hmm. from the PubMed authors, mm -hmm. but uh, they said that no people in Asia will do this uh, operation, uh, so many operations. So I think, and then I contacted mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. and then I saw at your website that you are the biggest implanter in Asia, yeah. so I managed to mm. study to you. Yes, I like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> mm, the whole of your clinic in here, the whole persons, the you, and then your operation, I like it a lot because uh, I think in Indonesia there is no place like this. Uh, I studied about the penile implants, and then it is uh, using the local anesthesia. Mm -hmm. And then this clinic is a private clinic with a good management. This is the most valuable things because this is the first time I see the oh. penile implant operation live, the <laughs> streaming. <laughs> and then with your technique, I think, oh, it's the most valuable thing for me. Uh, I will try to uh, make the first operation and then uh, I will go down with the market marketing. Mm -hmm. And I will build the first penile mm. process center in Indonesia, I think. Because there is no center in like this in Indonesia. You have to do a scroll approach. Yes. It'll look better. No, something in the So that they can make the people know about this treatment. Like I said, uh, irritable dysfunction suffer, ma makes men suffer, not just physically, but the mentally. Not just them, their family, their society will suffer as well. So treating them is, uh, you know, make the society healthier. So I want to be a part of the better good, I'll say, to, you know, so that I can treat the others whom I can treat. I can't. I cannot treat Indonesian patient. The cultural differences, you know, logistically that's far, but uh, Indonesian doctors can treat them as well. Since well, Dr. Atomoko, so far I've seen, he's a very energetic, dedicated people. And uh, training them is also a huge joy to me, you know. Uh, seeing a lot of people like I do, the, the, those who are interested in my job, I can feel a sincere, you know, a joy through that. Third part of the reason why I try to, you know, train them is that at a certain level, since not many people, not many physicians are doing this surgery, to further train my practice, to further train, to make my you know, surgery better, I'm training the other physicians. Why? During the training period, I train myself as well. Well, whomever they have, you know, they are whether the trainee or residents or you know, interns or they are I mean, professors, no matter how I mean, good they are or how you know, not that expert they are, I learn something from them. So training them is for myself as well. All in the end, I want to do a better, I mean, surgery to my, give my patient better surgery. So that's the reason why I keep doing this training. Other reason why is that uh, recently our practice has set up a research center. Its name is Wilson Memorial Research and Training Center for Penile Prosthetic Surgery. Wilson comes from uh, my, uh, my teacher, Dr. Stephen Carl Wilson. 
Um, he is a kind of mentor and he's the one who changed my life permanently. He trained me and uh, he raised me, uh, the people who I am now. He is a true godfather and a pioneer in this field. He saw the, you know, uh, how good it can be, how the healthier the society can be with the surgery. So his uh, endless, you know, uh, enthusiasm toward the research and the training. He trained more than uh, 3,000 physicians throughout his uh, 40 years of uh, practice. And he had uh, tons of papers and the researches for the surgery. Uh, unfortunately, that's not applying uh, well in my you know, country because uh, ethnically, we are, we are Asian patient, right? But uh, we do not have that kind of data with the Asian patients. We do not have uh, that kind of training center facility nor research center in my country. Not just my country, but uh, not just South Korea, but the whole Asian continent, we do not have a, a facility like that. So I really wanted to succeed and uh, you know, keep doing that throughout the Asian continent as well. We need more cases, we need more you know, experience on our patients, and we have to create our own you know, better treatment toward you know, patients, and uh, there must be something different with ethnicity, and then uh, we can invent or renovate the devices better for the Asian populations, or you know, there's a something different with the Asian populations, or there are many things we have to think about, or demo patient demographics and uh, surgical techniques, many things can be implemented and uh, many things can be researched, but it cannot be done with the surgery. It cannot be done with the research. So that's why I, uh, we had decided to start the research center. At the same time, the research center's ultimate goal is a better patient care. It can be done through a training and the research and the practice itself. Altogether, ultimately, it will result in a better practice. That's why uh, we are more into the training. Training is a part of the research as well. Why? Uh, how to train better, how to train properly is the uh, other part of the research. After all, medicine is a sharing. We share more, we get trained more, and we become a better physician so that we can serve our, sh our patients better. That's, I believe, I can, you know, at least uh, pay back what Dr. Wilson uh, gave me. Dr. Atmoko came from the Indonesia and the get trained from me is actually the part of it. Um, I don't get paid with the training, but still training them is a valuable experience both to trainees and the trainer. At the same time, uh, by doing so I can fulfill the, you know, the, the purpose of the research center, research and training center, and then I can succeed the will of Papa Wilson, so that's why. Uh, Dr. Otomoko came to us to get trained. He came to us by ourselves. We, there's a no fund or, or no supporting fund, or no, nothing else. So uh, what I want them to learn from my training is uh, uh, this surgery is, is for the patient's satisfaction. Back in the days, we physicians usually treat the disease, like a life or death, cancer, something like that. So because you know we were deciding patient's treatment we kind of, you know, decide them what to do or not. But a paradigm shift is happening with the medicine as well. These days, I believe what is more important we have to look into is not just the disease, but the quality of the patient's life. My surgery, uh, inflammatory penile process surgery, is for the patient's satisfaction of their life. So we physicians serve our patient, not deciding the, their, I mean, treatments or their, you know, whatever they do. We do not. I mean, decided anymore. We give the choice to the patient. We inform them, we give them information what they need, but we ask their choice what to do. So what I wish them to learn most is that we physicians are not the one who decides. We are just serving, to serve the patient better. We are just there as a, like a servant, I'll say. We serve them. So I wish them to learn that we are the one who serves, not the served. That's what I want them to learn.